If you're a copywriter or other creative who is uncertain about whether to pursue a career as a UX writer, Laura Umwarichia says, come on in. Product writing and UX writing are now well-established roles, and your writing and collaboration skills are in high demand. If you're not already technically savvy, Laura shares some tips on how to develop good relationships with software developers and the other folks you'll work with on a digital product team. She also has some great tips on how to settle into your new UX writing role. Welcome to the Content Strategy Insights Podcast, where accomplished content strategy experts share their wisdom with our friends in the content community. We talk with professionals who work across the span of content strategy, from small businesses to big enterprises, from content design to content marketing, from solo consultancies to huge agencies. Our mission is to democratize content strategy, to make its principles and practices accessible to everyone. And now, here's your host, Larry Swanson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode number 76 of the Content Strategy Insights podcast. I'm really happy today to have with us Laura Muricia. Uh, Laura is a product writer at Square, and I sure hope I pronounced your name correctly. But yeah. welcome, Laura. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, welcome. <laughs> and tell the folks a little bit more about your role at Square and, um, and how you came to be there. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura. I'm a product writer at Square. Um, And my path to becoming a product writer was kind of very convoluted, um, as I'm sure many people's paths are to to getting to where we all are today. Um, I initially started as a social worker. uh, That was the first part of my career. And um, after doing that for several years, moved to New York City, worked in freelance writing, worked in content marketing, became a content lead. Um, But most of the companies I worked with were were startups, um, mostly financial tech startups, but also ended up working full-time at a non-financial tech startup. And that's kind of where I got really, really, like a really good chance to dig deep into um, UX writing and just, you know, and what that meant to me. And so initially I'd I'd learned about it before um, trying to, you know, learn what UX was, you know, what is product design, learning the principles and obviously being a writer, I was like, wow, wouldn't it be super cool if we could just bring these principles into into writing? Um, and then I've discovered there was a whole thing. Um, and I was like, all right, this is cool. I have to become a UX writer. Yeah. This has to be my next job. Um, and so when I started my, my job at a company called Aircall, when I um, signed up, I was like, hey, um, while I'm here, I'd really love to also explore product writing and they said you know yeah it sounds good you know you're welcome to try it um and over my time there about a year and eight months I ended up uh learning a lot about product writing I was basically the only product writer there and I was able to kind of chip in and consult and work on projects and different problems um that the team was working on and that's kind of where I really got my start and my experience um and then of course with the experience of being a writer already was able to bring that into square um as a product writer and that's where I currently am that's great I love that you know we have this proliferation of job titles in this field right now and I I think product writer it's very closely related to UX writer but but UX writing is concerned strictly with you're kind of on a design team, whereas a product writer, you're on a product team. A lot of overlap between those, depending on how the organization manages those activities. There's a huge amount of overlap. But just tell me a little bit about like, what's the scope of your job? And maybe maybe even, or, or if a day-to-day look at it, like what's a, a typical day in the life of Laura at Square as a product writer? Sure. I mean, for me, there's like, two things is what I would like my job to be and then like what my job actually is, which I think a lot of writers deal with. Um, So when I signed up, I was like, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm just going to be doing just UX writing, focus on products. That's going to be it. But I think my second or third week, I was helping create like a landing page for a product and writing the marketing copy on that. And then I was doing some emails and I was, you know, doing some notifications and editing and auditing some things, um, some mailers and things like that. Um, on top of helping to write copy for the product. And so what I learned was, you know, yes, you come in, but the product team needs a lot more than just someone who's focusing on the copy on the on the actual products. Um, and whether for better or worse, you know, there usually is only one writer there to do it. Um, and you end up kind of 
absorbing a lot of the other writing roles that really should be for maybe a copywriter or a marketing writer once you're in the product team because you know a lot about the product. If you're already working on, you know, the copy for the product, you're already in the, you know, product reviews and things like that. When it comes time to market it or when it comes time to write an email, you kind of have the upper hand because you've been working in it for so long. Um, and so... I guess my day to day <laughs> varies. Um, I come in in the morning and I'm like, yeah, today I'm going to work on, you know, this product. And then by the middle of the day, I've gotten a bunch of Slack messages and I'm already working on six or seven other things. And then, you know, I come back at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, wow, look, I only did one line of copy in this entire product. <laughs> um, you know, and so there's there's just kind of like a, the, a you know, push and pull about your, your job as a product trader, but that's kind mm-hmm. of also finding that middle ground. You know, tell me, I want to go to what you just said that like you, at the end of the day, like, oh, great, there's one line of copy. Um, but there's probably, you, di- you didn't just sit there and stare at your keyboard all day. You were probably having conversations or tell me about like, and um, because I think a lot of writers feel that way, like, oh my God, that's all I got done. But if you could calmly look from outside and look back in and go, oh my gosh, we got a lot of work down there. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, it, it took me a while to get used to, you know, the fact that it's okay that you've written one line or one paragraph or whatever, because it takes, it's everything that goes, all the thought that goes into that that one line or you know that bit of copy so maybe you know you sat down and listened to calls from the designer and the pm interviewing um customers maybe you're just kind of reading through notes about things maybe you're looking through what other people in the in the organization have written what do our other products look like so a lot of it is just kind of absorbing a lot of that research and that knowledge um, and then empathizing with our users, of course, thinking what would they want in this situation? What have they said that they want? What do they definitely not want? Um, and then taking all of that and putting it into the framework of whatever content guidelines you've created uh, for the org and making sure that everything you want to do fits into that. And then for me, I like to run my stuff through like Grammarly, right? Because I'm really bad at something like uh, passive uh, voice misuse and so like mm-hmm. I'm like this is perfect now I know what I'm doing and then mm-hmm. Grammarly will be like no this is too passive and so then I'll have to come back to the drawing board and now that's when you're really refining the copy but the entire process you know that will take hours and hours and hours sometimes depending on how big the project is um, and so yeah you're right it, it it's tough to just see like one line, but it's, it, yeah. there's a lot of work that went into it. No, I did. I, I, I wasn't being disingenuous, but, but you <laughs> perfectly answered it the way I hoped you would. And like, like, I think it's every writer's, um, it's like any task that is like, oh, I could have done that. Like any design thing where you look at the Nike logo and go, well, yeah, I could have done that. It's like, right. probably not, you know, and the same thing, that's just one artifact that was I don't know, God knows how many hundreds or thousands of hours of design work to get to that. And so if you end up with one line of, of good copy at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it's just a reflection of all that research that you did or consumed or c- customers you talked with or are just reflecting and trying to empathize with them. So, yeah. I, oh, absolutely. I, yeah. But also one other thing, and one of the things when we first connected, we connected at the UX uh, writing conference a few weeks ago, and I was really struck by how... Um, kind of effortless and seamless your collaboration with your colleagues at Square seems. I don't know, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you were smoothing it over for the presentation, but it sounded like a genuine, um, the, a, a genuine uh, uh, good relationship with the designers, developers, and other folks you work with. Can you talk a little bit about how you collaborate and how much of that's unique to your role at Square and how much of it is just you bringing Laura to the game? Yeah, um, I'd probably say it's a little bit of both. At least I'd like to think it's a little bit of both. But um, I think one thing that's really important to me is, you know, when it comes to collaboration is just how much you can learn from other people and how much that can make your job easier. And I think I told you this before, um, the strings uh, situation where... You know, um, for everyone who, you know, who doesn't know, um, I was trying to conduct a content audit and uh, I was doing it manually. It was taking forever, line by line, you know, every single screen. And finally, I was like, you know, I should I should email a developer like they they probably have all this copy somewhere. And so I did. I emailed the um, one of the developers and she was like, yeah, I'll just pull some strings for you. 
And I was like, I, what, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what are you saying to me? Um, and so she, you know, she tells me like, listen, yeah, strings are just like the, the bits of copy that go into all of the, all the stuff we're, we're creating. Um, and so just little things like that. So I was able to take this information and, and go forward and ask other people, you know, I need this for this product. Can you pull it for me? And was able to start building, you know, those relationships as well, um, based on things like, you know, mutual language, you should be able to understand how they talk, how I talk, um, you know, and things like that. And so stuff like that can just get you really far in not only your career, but like, just day to day tasks. Um, and so for me, absolutely investing in, in building like good relationships at work is a must. Mm-hmm. And, and that example you just gave, I love that because there's, it's, I'm glad you found a kind developer and it sounds like there's good people at Square to help you with that because I've, I've known a lot of crusty old programming guys who just it's called a string, you know, it's like, there's, there's other ways that could have unfolded. So, um, but you I'm know, sorry. but just that insight that, that um, strings are this sort of way of articulating what all that content in a product or maybe about a product is, um, mm-hmm. I, uh, how do you manage that? Like, how do you do, do you, you, you it's it would be pretty inefficient to have to go to a developer every time you have a question about a string and like how to get them are there ways do you use like um uh any kind of tool to manage the strings that you work with um right now we're able to just put it all in excel and work with it from there and excel is great because you can fiddle around with it really really easily there's there's ways to manipulate everything that's on there so that's what i'm using but Right now, there's actually a product we're looking at called Strings, um, mm. and it's still in beta, I believe. Um, and so we're still looking at perhaps using that. And what it does is basically pull all of the copy from from your from your product, and you can edit it right in there. And then what it does is, is it will uh, shoot like a little message to GitHub, um, a pull request to the, des- to the developers and they can approve it, decline it, send it back, whatever. And what it basically means is that you can just instantly update the code by you know, yourself. So these are things like we're looking, really looking forward to, but, um, and hopefully they happen soon, but you know, not, not yet. So right now just good old Excel. <laughs> yep. No, and that's, I, I've seen everything from, um, remember I have a buddy who's a UX writer at Alaska airlines and he showed me his system, which was just like this huge long text file with like, possi- anyhow, and, and he had, but it was very organized. It wasn't just a text file. It was like this sort of uh, well organized, um, but list of possible strings, and then the ones that made the cut were bolded. And anyhow, there was this whole um, thing about that. Have you evaluated? There's, I've heard of Ditto. It's a plugin for Figma, I believe. And yeah, similar. It's, it's. Yeah. yeah, I think they're pretty similar. I think these are. There are two companies, Ditto and Strings, that are kind of working on this that I know of. I'm sure there's definitely way more. Um, but Ditto, I think, was at the UX Writers Conference as well. Yeah, I think um, that's where I heard about that. But and I think and yeah. a, a lot of the chatter on Twitter and, and social media in general, I gather there's lots of initiatives out there. And I'm sure that Adobe's doing something and and everybody has their ways of doing that. But I think I think the way you're doing it is from what I gather is probably the most typical, some kind of a spreadsheet or Airtable or Excel or um, uh, Google Sheet somewhere. Um, yeah, that's that's what the rest of the writers, uh, the rest of the UX writers here mm-hmm. use as well. Um, and you know, the the big thing is like organization as a UX writer is like half your job, you know? I mean, most of the time you're just trying to put things where people can find them, can find them easily. Um, and that is, that's just eats up so much time as well. So you're not always writing, you're organizing your writing as well. Well, tell me more about that because, well, a quick aside on that. When I met you at the UX writing conference, the, the one of the things that came up in the Q&A after your presentation was like, wow, how'd you do your slides? And you had just done them in Canva. And I'm like, well, of course, that would be the way to do slides nowadays. And then you also shared um, a little bio page, I think, in Notion. So you have a pretty, mm-hmm. you have like the cool new tool set, Notion and, and Canva. And um, But anyway, tell me more about the toolkit that you operate with. So you have the yeah. spreadsheet for managing strings. And what else do you use? Yeah, yeah sure. I, I just like to say that I blame a little bit of this on my time in the startup world which you get exposed to so many really cool and innovative products that are coming out um, so many SaaS products 
And so I was always really willing and eager to try all of them. I actually didn't like Notion when I first started using it, um, but now I'm a huge fan. So like I said, so Notion's a really great way to just build an easily navigatable, shareable website. Um, and it's not like a full website, but you can link people to it really easily. Um, so if you need anything like that, I use Trello to organize my things into boards. Um, I create my own sprints that way and, and, and put like, okay, so this is going to be for project A, B, C, and all their projects listed out um, that are just copy related. I use monday.com to organize stuff with my team. Um, you know, and some of these are free, like Trello's free, Notion's free. Um, I don't know about monday.com. I think it might be free for just like an individual. Um, and so like just those are the biggest things I would say I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then of course, Google Drive, naturally, that's absolutely important. Um, <laughs> Canva, um, you know, I don't play around in GitHub often or really ever. It's very intimidating to me and I'm I'm sure I can't break anything, um, but I always worry. So, you know, I sometimes take a peek, but that's, you know, that's just for the developers. So that's the beauty of GitHub. That whole pull request thing will save yeah. people like us because I'm the same way. I just um, cross my fingers and hope that what I've done doesn't break something. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Another thing I love using is like on Figma, um, which is where we do all of our design stuff. I have a, I have my own Figma um, board that's just called Laura's Sandbox and all the different projects are in there in pages and I can just play around with them as much as I want and no one else can see them. And then when I'm ready to start actually working on copy that other people want to see and give feedback on, um, I can just kind of jump back. So, you know, don't be afraid to kind of build your own boards on Figma as well and, and, and start playing around on there. That's great. And this gets at another one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is when we were talking uh, during your presentation and we, we chatted a little bit after um, uh, that you're just you just jump right into this stuff too. Like, so like, like I've been, like you mentioned notion and how um, I kind of had a similar thing. I didn't quite get it at first. And the, you, you kind of, and I've, I've slowly kind of dived into it, but it seems like you dive in way quicker, both into these, the, the, the tools like this. Can you tell a little bit about kind of your um, tool adoption process? Like how does something like, how did you pick Monday over a sauna or base camp or something? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think for me, first of all, it's like, I want really, really badly for the tool to be helpful. And I think that's probably like, just not probably that good. But I, you know, but I, I do want the tool to be useful and definitely give it a chance, keep trying it as much as I can. Um, but, you know, like, for example, how we picked Notion or Monday over Asana or anything like that. We're designers. And so we honestly picked the one that we thought could do the job and look the best doing it. Um, and that sounds really, really shallow, but then it's really not because that's basically all of our jobs is to make things look good, make them you know accessible, make them really easy to understand. And so for us, a design tool also had to be able to do that. So things like Notion, things like Trello, when I pick those tools, I'm like, is, are, is their UX good? You know, the UX writing in Trello, I think is great. I think it's really hilarious to have like a little dog that tells you jokes and things. And so um, for me, it's those little things, those little touches that I'm like, yes, I want to use your tool because it speaks to me rather than something that's just cold, but does the job. Um, yeah, so that's how, <laughs> that's how we, pick, we picked that. <laughs> I love that. And I, I, I just, I, I just love getting inside of other people's heads about their, their process and how those things come together. Another thing that happened, we had sort of a, pro, a chat between the conference and now uh, about um, sort of your, I mean, your approach is evident just in all the things we've talked about to this point, but it seems like you have an almost explicit mission to inspire other people to, to get into design or UX writing or product writing. Is that, is that actually part of your agenda or, uh, I mean... Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, for me, it's always been a little bit odd for me that people who are writers who have a huge background in writing really struggle or are really hesitant to transition into a different form of writing. Um, for me, I just think, you know, if the basics are there, if you know how to do the job, if you know how to write, you're already a better writer than most people, then you're 
more than halfway there. This is just adding things to your toolkit. You know, me as a UX writer doesn't mean I can't still do marketing copy anymore. It doesn't mean I still can't build a landing page anymore. You don't forget what you know how to write. It's just adding new things. And so what I see UX writing as or product writing or whatever we're calling it um, is just a new skill set to add to your already existing toolkit, which is the ability to write. Um, and so I am a huge, I'm a huge champion for people getting into this field, um, be, you know, for a lot of reasons. One, I think it's, it's just so important that we get writers in tech. Um, tech is really, really struggling for, for getting writers. Um, and, and I don't know why, um, probably because writers are a little scared to get into tech. Um, but you know, that's, they need us. They absolutely need us in there and, and, and they're willing to pay us. They're willing to, you know, they're willing to listen to us. Um, and that's something that we should really not take for granted and, and, and open ourselves up to that and, and show our importance in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, and thanks for being that way, because I think that for being matter of fact about it, because I think there are a lot of writers who, like you just alluded to, have, have trouble making that, um, um, that, that transition, but a lot of people are doing it now. And so I really appreciate that you've, that you are so matter of fact about it and just like, hey, if you can write and there's this other way of doing it, this other context, great, come on over, let's, let's, let's try it out. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you something you said just a minute ago reminded me that I wanted to ask earlier. How many products do you work on? I know that Square must have like a lot of different internal products. Are you working on one thing at a time or do you work, do you support multiple products at Square? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, ideally I'd love to only work on like one or two things, but right now I'm working on, I think six different products. Um, three of them, which are seller facing products. So they're actual things that, you know, our customers are using and whatever, but the others are more back end things, emails, um, fraud processes, dashboards, things like that. And so, you know, to me, I feel like that is a lot of things for any writer at all to be to be working on. I think people really do their best work, especially for me as a writer, when you're really focused on one thing and you hone in on that and you get really good um, at writing about that because you become faster. You know, you're a much faster writer and you can churn out more things if you're really focused on one or two, maybe even three things. But when you're spread out, um, it gets really hard to take to compartmentalize every single day every hour of your day and so i would encourage and this is again why i encourage more people to get into writing uh, or more writers to transition into tech is because we need you you know we are drowning um in work we have way too much work and we just need more people to come in and kind of help us out here um and so you know you know if you're if you're a writer out there and you're like well i don't know i'm still if you've been writing for several years you're just learn the basics, learn what you need to do, and then, and then you're probably good mm -hmm. to go. And this is not at all to say that, you know, product writing is easy or UX writing is easy because that is not true. Um, there's absolutely a lot to learn, but you're in a much better position to learn and learn quickly um, as a writer than someone who's never written before. And so at least that's my, that's my firm belief. <laughs> no, I, that makes perfect sense. And I think, um, do, do you have any tips for people who haven't had experience working with designers or development, you know, like kind of coders, uh, like how to, how to um, like speak their language or to open the relation, you know, kind of cultivate relationships with them? Because that seems really important to your success. Yeah, I mean, uh, like make friends with them outside of work. Um, some of my really good friends are like one really good friend of mine is a designer um, and another one is a developer. And so what makes it easy is that you can just kind of have these conversations much more casually and learn a lot of things that you can then take back to work um, and start building that vocabulary. Another thing is definitely be reading, um, you know, be reading on Medium. Medium is amazing. And I don't just say that because they're a Twitter owned company, <laughs> but um, you know, I, they're, they're an amazing company and you're able to learn a lot from there and a lot from people who are already working in the field. Um, so just find some really awesome people on Twitter, follow them on Medium or find them on LinkedIn and follow them on Medium and just see how they're talking, see how they're communicating, um, go to meetups. I wish we could still physically go, but now it's probably even more accessible. Going to meetups is how you learn a lot of that. And a lot of it is just like you just absorb it, you know what I mean? You can't just, no one can explain to you how to talk in tech, quote unquote, but you have to, it's something that you have to learn if you're going to be able to work in tech and you only learn that just like with languages by 
being there. And like you said, right now, I, this just occurred to me that like we have a unique opportunity. You don't have to actually, you know, like jump in the subway or jump in the car to get to the meetup. You can go anywhere. And if you're a little bit introverted and don't normally like meetups, this is a great, a lot easier to lurk on a Zoom call or a, um, another uh, virtual meetup. So um, maybe yeah, totally, you can even, yeah, yeah your, your screen can like even be off, you know, and you're mute. No one has to see you. Um, <laughs> but obviously, yeah, try to be seen. But, you know, that, yeah. that network working bits important and and building the network and building your own brand um, and I think this is a little bit of a holdover from my marketing days but you know that that is absolutely a huge part of who anyone is like in in the in the modern working world is learning to build your brand not only externally but also internally when within, within um, where you work, whether you're introverted or extroverted, you can always be doing a little something extra, whether it's, you know, sharing your knowledge or um, whatever it might be, just to kind of keep pushing along and motivating yourself to learn um, for as long as you're going. Yep. No, that's, I think you're right. I think that's a, one of the top um, capabilities that anybody needs nowadays is that ability to form an impression in other people's minds about, oh, that's what Laura is about. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Laura, I just noticed these always go so quickly. We're already coming up close to time, but I always like to make sure uh, before, uh, before we do a little wrap up part, um, is there anything last, anything that's come up in this conversation or anything just about product writing or UX writing that you want to make sure we talk about today? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would just say, you know, just to reiterate, like we, we really do want more people to be product writers. And, you know, I think that I hear a lot is people are like, well, how is it? It's going to be too hard working with a design team. Designers don't respect us. Maybe product people don't respect us. No one knows what we do. Um, and that's false because they do know what you do. But you do have to also be willing and able to explain to people that don't know what you do exactly what you do. And you do that by showing them. Um, and so I would just encourage anyone that's feeling a little bit maybe demotivated or whatever it might be that like, it's okay. You have a huge, huge um, support group of UX writers around the world. And um, it's, it's a real profession. Absolutely is. And it has been around for a while now. Um, and so, you know, just kind of get in there. Don't be afraid to get your feet wet and, uh, and show your worth. Great. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, that's, so, that's such a great approach. I just really appreciate your um, sort of um, enthusiasm and, and inspiration about that. That like, because um, it's often presented as like this tough nut to be cracked and this challenge you got to overcome. You're just like, no, you're a good writer. Just figure out how to fit in and it'll, you know, and, and yeah. there's plenty of demand for UX writing and go get them. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, go go get them. It's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Um, wait, well, hey, and one last thing, Laura. Uh, what's the best if folks want to follow you on social media or connect? What's the best way to stay in touch with you? Sure. Um, for me, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there, and uh, Media. My some of my old writing is still there. Hopefully, we'll start writing again soon. Um, and then, of course, Twitter. It's L M W I R I C H, um, and that's it. That's where Great. I'm at. Okay, and I'll include those in the show notes as well. Um, awesome. Great. Well, thanks so much, Laura. I really appreciate the conversation. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was awesome. Thank you for listening. If you can think of a friend who might enjoy this episode, please share it with them. And please join us again for our next content strategy interview.